Back in 2017, when Spotify radio was good, I came across this song. I'd never heard the band before, but that song got carried on streaming with a couple million plays, and I liked it. I put it in a playlist and didn't bother checking the band out further, but I did remember their name. Our Hollow, Our Home. Fast forward six years to when I'd next hear that name, a post on the Metalcore subreddit where four members of the band had left, seemingly amicably, and the last member with the unenviable task of trying to rebuild something he can't let go of. Fast forward to today, and he's done it. There's a new album out, streaming numbers are still looking great, but it jokes on you, four members of the band quit again and now the band's dead. For good. And I'm not gonna lie, that kind of pisses me off. Not because I was a big Hollow fan, uh, Clearly I wasn't, but because I got invested in the story. Getting a band in heavy music to stay together and achieve success through multiple years is difficult enough. Trying to reconstruct it and keep it afloat is even tougher. Most bands in that situation would have just quit. But not Toby. Toby wanted to keep this thing going. Accusations of being a control freak and everybody you recruited quitting isn't a great way to do that, but we'll get to that later. I remember after the initial breakup announcement last year, I went and read through band member statements just to see if there was any drama, but as suspicious as four people leaving a band simultaneously might seem, it didn't appear there was any bad blood. It could have been as simple as one person saying it was time for them to go, and then there was a cascade effect until there was only one guy standing. So I decided to go back and listen to the album that that first song is from. And, yeah, there's a lot of good shit. Heartsick definitely isn't a perfect record, but it's a fun throwback to the late 2010s down to the metalcore that fit in with the landmarks and the wage war that I was listening to back then. I listened to it so much, Hollow became my second most listened to artist on Spotify last year. I even bought the damn thing. The other albums that they released in the years since didn't click with me nearly as much, but that one did, and it was enough to make me hope that Toby was going to be able to keep this sucker alive. And from a Sonic perspective, it's lucky that he was the last guy left. A riff writer, songwriter, and clean vocalist who's been in the band since the Dark Ages was probably the best candidate to try a rebuild considering he made up so much of Hollow's sound. Fans getting used to a different screamer probably would have been the biggest hurdle they'd need to get past, but I I was also excited to see how the band's sound would change with a lot of new ideas from several new people. Foreshadowing is a literary device where about two months after the breakup, in comes the new lineup. James Hackett, Kieran from A Thousand Voices, Matt from Lightwave, and Gaz from Sorrow to Serenity. At first glance, that honestly seems Pretty killer, especially since Gaz has a ton of vocal range. And a couple months after that announcement, in comes the comeback single. I'm the wrong guy to say whether Downpour did its job or not. Just kidding, you can find my comment on the subreddit. But I liked it. Even if it felt like the band was playing it safe with the band's sound, it still vibed like a hollow song and gave Gaz a platform to showcase his range. More than that, it felt like a victory moment. Getting four new guys together that get along, are willing to tour, and putting out new music was the penultimate sign that Our Hollow Our Home was going to survive this transition period. And I had that song on repeat for a good chunk of last year. They were in the studio, playing festivals, getting tours with Crystal Lake and Attila. Legit, all I had to do was sit back, and in a couple months, there'd be a new album in my hands. The album happened. The band stopped happening. July 9th, 2024, James, Gaz, Matt, and Kieran all quit the band with statements that look pretty similar. Accusations of exclusion, misery, disrespect, and inflexibility so great it had apparently been going on for months and finally gotten to be too much. 
Statements with pictures that all conveniently crop one guy out of the image. Meanwhile, the band posts a different statement to their page, citing a negative spiraling headspace due to Toby's mother's supposed health crisis. It also apologizes to the four departing members taking responsibility for being difficult to work with. Letting someone else take the wheel even when you probably should was apparently impossible. I'm not saying that Toby's mother's health scare isn't legit, but it's hard not to see its inclusion in the statement as an attempt to deflect or lessen the consequences consequences, especially since comments on that post are locked, Toby privated his Instagram, content was deleted, every single Hollow platform got wiped, and band members later doubled down on their accusations of him being a control freak, Hollow basically turning into a glorified cover band, and that none of the profits of an album that they worked on would be going to them because of their collective choice to quit. That all looks like an attempt to lessen the consequences. I'm not saying it was, I can't judge intent, but just looking at publicly available information, that's enough to piss me off. Bands having a primary or even a sole songwriter not new. Mike writes everything for Spirit Box and even tracks bass himself, so I'm not disparaging the concept, but it sounds like the guys got lured in by a promise of a new creative venture and then hit a brick wall once Toby was being too overprotective. I also don't have a reason to think they're all collectively gaslighting, because Hollow would have been the biggest project these guys ever worked on, and they seemingly had every reason to be involved in its success. And you might think this is insignificant, bands dissolve all the time, but a campaign of goodwill and a band pulling over 100k monthly listeners at one point, seemingly getting ruined by one dude, doesn't sit right with me. For three main reasons. First, suppressing people's ability to be creative is fucking criminal. I get being tunnel visioned or wanting to follow extreme guidelines for some reason, and it's why tons of people in college stop wanting to work with me on film projects. That and I was also lazy as shit, but different story. Four new people came into an existing project eager to contribute to its resurrection and were stonewalled so bad they didn't stick around to see the fruits of their labor getting released while they were still together. The band did an Instagram AMA back when they were recording new album ideas. This was months ago. And I should have recorded this, but I asked how much of the new album was new material and Matt clarified that only about 10% of it was stuff that Toby had in the vault. The rest was new as of the new lineup. Everything here now makes it sound like Toby was also most of the other 90%, and that sucks. Second, the story of losing your mates, rebuilding, and getting back on stage is an incredibly compelling one, so much that me, as a non-fan of the band, decided to invest hope into it. And it was looking great. Skill of the new guys was undeniable if you looked into their past projects. They kept posting content making it seem like they were having a blast together, and when you're having fun, the audience is having fun. For it to end with an 80% casualty rate, the same way the band ended years ago, leaves a bitter aftertaste as somebody who was really rooting for this to succeed. And third, the album's not bad. Like, the singles alone had me wondering if this would crack my top 10 this year. Gaz sounds like a monster, the chorus melodies got stuck in my head repeatedly, the production for a modern metalcore record is still really good, and I've got several of these songs in playlists now. It's not redefining by hollow standards or by the tropes of the genre, but if I listened to it only knowing that there were four new guys in the band and not knowing how they had broken up, I probably would have assumed they were playing it safe the same way they did with Downpour so they didn't shock their audience too badly or anything. Now knowing what I know, this feels more like a Toby exercise and fanatical loyalty to a style of music he feels the need to carry on at all costs, even if his teammates are trying to make it a collective effort. Like, aspects of hollow sound that I'm not even really personally a fan of, like how the vocals are often so rhythmically all over the place, such as it feels like freeform poetry. I'm not saying don't do that if that's what you're artistically compelled to do, but let it come naturally and not do it because you feel the need to meet a manual of style. Why bring four guys in willing to bring your baby back from the dead and then leash them to a point where lyrical ideas are getting rejected and twist meaning away from its original intent? Like This is the sort of thing that stains an otherwise promising new chapter in a successful band's trajectory and it makes Hope and Hell a much harder listen than it had to be. I wanted to like this. On some level I do, but I don't like how we got here. Doubtless the band doesn't either. I had the idea for this video months ago, seeing the reunion and how well the new singles were doing, and I was gonna title it, This Band Came Back From The Dead And It Rules. 
and instead we get this. I don't know if I can personally recommend buying the album if the proceeds only go to one guy, but I can say at least give the album a listen and then decide for yourself afterwards whether you think it deserves more of your time. In the aftermath, James and Gaz are apparently working on new music on a currently unannounced project, Matt's going back into his tattoo removal business, Kieran's trying to launch back into content creation, and apparently Hollow is still gonna be playing a show in about a week? Not sure what the hell that's gonna look like if that still goes ahead. Give the guys a follow if you're interested in what they do next. And Toby, I hope your mom's okay. And I hope you get the help you need. I was rooting for this to succeed, but I'm not the only one feeling a bit betrayed.